What is PubSub Hubbub? So PubSub Hubbub is a protocol uh, for turning RSS and Atom feeds uh, into real-time streams. So it's a way of taking you know, a bunch of existing content on the web and bringing it into the real-time web, uh, making it so that when you publish changes to the content, it immediately kind of traverses the entire web and it's available to subscribers and other websites. Um, so you, know, you publish to your blog and uh, you publish to an RSS feed. And then PubSub Hubbub is basically a way to tell a whole bunch of other websites out there that there's new content that's ready um, so that you can go and enjoy it uh, and read it. Now it's been out for a couple of years now, right? Yeah, it's been out for a few years, about three years, and um, we've, you know, it continues to grow, um, and it's been adopted by a lot of different services, uh, and you know, it's still in use today. Now switching gears a little bit, now you created a Twitter account a few months ago, right? Yes. And, and that on its own doesn't sound like a huge deal. Right. But it was a big deal for you. Why was that? A it big is. Deal? Yeah. So I mean, I, so for years I've been putting off uh, having a Twitter account and. The reason is that I had hoped that, you know, I would be able to, you know, tweet from my own blog mm -hmm. without having to, you know, be part of some other service. The, the idea was that there would be this decentralized social web that my node could be a participant of, um, you know, and it's just like email. You know, I have a, a Gmail account. I can send email to Yahoo accounts or Hotmail accounts. It all just works. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no kind of question. Of course it works. Uh, but social networking, is in, uh, social networking is not like that. So Facebook accounts can't talk to MySpace accounts, um, and there's this real interoperability problem. So you know, I worked for years to try to make that happen. Uh, PubSub Hubbub is just one component of the larger kind of solution to that. But you know, it's been a few years, uh, and it, it just hasn't worked. Mm. And so and I took a step back and looked at the services I'm using to connect with people, and I realized that we really need to take an approach from the other side, uh, from the end user. Uh, normal people need to understand why it's important to run their own websites and to own their own content. Um, they need to understand that they should publish from their own their own w blog, um, so they're in control of how their content's accessed, how it's monetized, how it's packaged up. Um, but the thing is, if you do that, you lose this engagement. Mm. So, kind of the the new thought here is, you know, publish from your own site, but use all these great social networks like Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook to connect with your audience, to boost engagement, and to you know, get as much reach as you possibly can. Because when you connect with your audience over your content, it, it boosts your creativity, and it's that feedback loop that, that keeps people interested in, in producing. Do you think we'll get to the point where we've got the decentralization, or is this, is this it? I, I think we'll get there. You know, I think it's, it's almost an inevitability, yeah. um, but you know, it's going to take some time, and it's. I thought it would be done by now, um, <laughs> but it's not. So it'll be a few more years. Now you're mentioning uh, it's important for people and, and organizations to maintain their own site. Uh, is there? Are you picking up on a trend for people thinking that that's a bit of an afterthought? Yeah, I mean, you definitely see that with uh, brands directly linking to Facebook pages, and right. um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's that's the biggest point. example of that. And those people have the most to. They understand branding the best, and they have the most to lose if you don't. If they don't establish their brands, yeah. it's the go-to place. But, I mean, what you see is the value is in the, in the engagement. So, you know, Coca-Cola is willing to send you to Facebook to engage with their brand because that's more valuable than going to Coca-Cola.com. You know, the, the corporate website is not interesting to an audience. So you can't really, you know, I can't really argue with that, uh, why they promote that. But I, I hope that uh, over time people will realize that the control they have, especially over stuff like monetization, you know, I don't want ads next to my posts. You know, that's right. a valid thing. Um, it might start to swing the other way. There's also sort of the canonical sense of it, right? Where as long as you control that, you can maintain it. That can be the thing that people continue to come back to, mm -hmm. or it's the reference point. Right, and so if you ch if you like Facebook today, and tomorrow you're moved to Tumblr, right. I mean, in the same way that these social networks kind of come and go, you always have your kind of home base, right. um, you know, an address where people can always reach you. So I, I know at Google now you're working on Google Consumer Surveys. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Consumer Surveys is kind of Google's first um, entrance into the market research space. Um, it's a platform for doing market research, you know, answering questions about attitude and behaviors and you know, basically anything you could ever want to know about your customers or how to attract new customers. That's what we do. Um, but the interesting thing is the way that we actually gather the data. So what we do is we're running on a bunch of premium content websites, that a lot of them you've heard of. Uh, and what happens is that users come to these sites, and instead of having to you know, pay with their credit card um, to pay for a paywall, 
uh, we show them a, a one or two question survey. And by answering the question, uh, you earn access to the content. So it's in lieu of a paywall, uh, you answer a question and you get, you get the article. It takes between seven and 12 seconds. Um, it's anonymous. It's never used to target ads. And it's this really nice kind of positive um, interaction between the user and the publisher uh, and the researcher. So we, we traffic these you know, questions out there on these publisher sites. We aggregate the, the data together. We do a bunch of statistical analysis of it. And then we give it back to a research uh, company, which is anything from a small business that's doing logo testing to a medium business that's about to launch some new brand identity or some new messaging, or a large company that's trying to track um, brand perception over time, you know, positive and negative attitudes. And so it's really just this win-win-win thing where you know, we're, we're paying the Texas Tribune over $5,000 a month to run this. No kidding. Yeah, and it's like real money, um, hopefully putting more journalists to work. Sure. Um, companies are getting really good data. Uh, the data is statistically significant, and it lets you break it down by region and gender and age and, and a bunch of other uh, kind of segments. And you can really bet your business on this. Um, in the same way that we were, you know, democratized advertising with AdWords, we're kind of doing that again with market research. It's, it's a, you know, a tool where anyone can do it. Right. So the last question for you, what, what people or projects are you following these days? Yeah, so, I mean, I think that what uh, Anil Dash and Gina Trapani are working on with ThinkUp um, maybe is maybe not the last hope for the decentralized social web, but I think that that is um, really interesting. You know, they're trying to make it so normal people understand why they should have their own their own address. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, Tantek Chalek also is kind of leading the way on indie web, and uh, he's putting on a, a conference up in Portland. You know, the indie, indie web camp that's kind of digging into how to make this work, um, kind of the new approach that we're talking about. Right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me.